Can I take 10 more minutes? Yeah. Okay, 10 more minutes. I'm opening a can of worms. I'm acknowledging it ahead of time. I'm opening a can of worms. This is going to be something that offends some of you, but I feel obligated to share it with you because it is killing our youth. You have youth in their 20s, in their 30s, early 30s. You have youth that, keep, that, that their parents want them to be successful. So they say, go to, go to college. Okay, go to college. They go to college and they're dorming in college. Or even if they're not going to be a community college, they're spending eight to ten hours a day on campus. What do they see on campus? I think the guys here know what they see on campus. They see it all the time. So they come to their parents and say, uh, Dad, I think I need to get married. Oh, are you kidding? I haven't graduated yet. And after you graduate, you have to go on to med school. You have to finish that too. Another eight years, whatever you have to do. For those eight years, where is this boy going to be? On campus. Eight to ten hours a day. What's he going to see all around him? Barely dressed women that are throwing themselves at him just to see if he can. Just to see what happens. Just for fun. Just for kicks. Do you think it's going to have an effect on his mind or not? Do you think his, the fact that he has no avenue, he can't talk to anybody about this. If he tries to talk to his parents about this, it's shame on you. Pervert, can't hold it. <laughs> you know? I got married when I was 37 or whatever. <laughs> when I was your age, you know. <laughs> The, the fathers here forget what they were like when they were younger. And then you brought them here. You put them in, in the heart of shamelessness. And then you don't let them get married. It's something that can save them to some extent. It's not the only, it's not a solution, but it's a big part of the solution. And you put them there for 12 years, 13 years. You don't think this boy is going to be, I'll be honest with you, you don't think this boy is going to be addicted to pornography? Who are you kidding? You don't think so? You don't think he's going to clean out his, the cash on his laptop or his mobile device so nobody else knows what's up? You don't think he's going to have a secret profile on Facebook? You don't think he's going to have extramarital relationships? You don't think he's going to develop other very serious psychological disorders and develop a two-phase? On the one hand, he's a good boy, he's not going to listen to his parents, this guy gets good grades, and on the other hand, he's become a deviant. By, by not Islamic standards, by human psychological standards. He's, he's disturbed. And a lot of our children here in this audience are addicted to pornography and that is a fact. The youth here are the boys and girls. They're addicted to it. And you know when you're addicted to something like a film, piece of filth like that, you know what happens to you? You lose all respect for them. You have no respect for them. You only see them like an animal sees a female animal. That's all you see. And when that happens for 10 years, then you let him get married. Do you think he has any respect for his wife? Do you think that addiction that's there for 10 years is going to disappear now? It's going to go away on its own just like that? No. You just destroyed a girl's life too. You destroyed a home. Because you refused to face reality. This is reality. This is America. Welcome. You know? We have some of the most beautiful homes of any Muslim community in the world. We have the newest cars of any Muslim community in the world. People, there are Muslims, there are Muslims living in the Muslim world that on Eid day, they get to eat beef. They, they have chicken every day, or, or vegetables. On Eid, can they have a piece? They have one piece of beef. We're living in a society of abundance. We get people like, oh man, come on, I have beef, I need something else. Change the menu. We're the society of leftovers. We're the society that has everything, everything at our, at our fingertips. We have, it seems like everything, that, you know, massaging like this in the palace, man. The amount of money it took to build a masjid like this, and these massages are all over America. All over America. The amount of money this takes, you could build massage like hundreds of, hundreds of massages, with the money it takes to build one masjid in America. We're affluent, we're successful. We have the highest levels of education. We have some of the highest levels of salaries. We're the most well off. And yet, our homes are broken. Our homes are broken. Our marriages are broken. Our children are broken. They're psychologically broken. I want to share this reality with you because we're not talking about it. We're not having an honest conversation with each other about this. This is something that affects all of us. We can pretend that everything's okay. Or we can wake up, smell the coffee, and deal with it, and fix it, and deal with it, and have an honest conversation about it. How many of you men here that have teenage children, or your fathers and mothers who have teenage daughters, have talked to their kids about boys and girls? Have talked to their kids about pornography? 
Because you're afraid to talk to them. Because you're afraid of what you might find out. You're afraid. And they're afraid to talk to you because you're going to flip out. <laughs> just, even if, if you guys have made mistakes, I don't want you to feel suicidal. It's okay if you make mistakes. We're all human beings. But the very point of a community is when somebody makes a mistake, when somebody falls, when somebody is engulfed in sin, they say, look, you're a human being. I make mistakes too. Let me help you. Let me help you. Instead of just yelling at you and telling you you're going to help, I'm here to help you. I'm here for you. I can help you. And if you're not going to do that for your own family, who's going to come and do that for them? How many times all over this country I go, parents come and say, can you talk to my son? Can you talk to my brother? Can you talk to my nephew? Why aren't you talking to them? There's, what, am I, what magical words that I'm going to say? Maybe the way you talk to them is messed up. Maybe you need to change the way you talk to them, you know? This is a fact of life. Life, I was terrified. I was terrified. I was at the convention last week. And I was supposed to speak a late night section session about shamelessness to a bunch of sisters. There was a social worker, myself, and uh, another Dr. Samuel, and another did an amazing job. You know? How many questions came from the audience about, you know, what do you do if you've lost your regime? How do you make trouble? These are all these girls in the job. Well, Lahi, I, was, I just wanted to not answer the question. I just wanted to sit there and cry. And I got three girls. What am I going to do with their kids? I just wanted to sit there and cry. These are my sisters. You know, when these, when these girls have these problems, when these boys have these problems, that's not somebody else's problem. This is my family. You guys are my family because we share life that I don't want. When we lose one of our kids, that's my loss too. You know? As sad as you are, I should be equally sad, but if not more sad. When this concern becomes primary, you know what happens in our communities? We stop fighting about anything else. We don't care about who, who's the salah, who's the imam, how many taraweeh they're going to pray, who's on the board, who's not on the board, because we're all worried about our children. We got a bigger problem. And when we're not worried, when we pretend this problem doesn't exist, we got other things to fight about. And that's the reality of most communities. They close their eyes to the, the things that are happening. Most of the, our, our communities across America, fights are going on side by side. That's a fact. It's a shameful fact, but it's a fact. You know, we complain about the corrupt Muslim governments across the Atlantic. You, are, you guys have been through governments in Masjid. <laughs> it's same exact corruption. And why? Because the real priority of saving our own children is not even a point of discussion. Not even a point of discussion. To the point where even if the youth do come to the masjid, some girl comes into the masjid without hijab on, Astaghfirullah, what are you doing? She be here. The fact that she came to the masjid, can I just, can you say Alhamdulillah she's here? Because there are a lot of clubs that are open. And I'm, I, I know about hijabi, you know, Facebook profiles, girls wearing hijab, she's getting taking pictures at the club. That's their too. That's a reality also. You know? So we have to be honest. We have to be honest. You got the young people here, you guys need to take a step back and realize the consequences of what you're doing. You're destroying your entire faith. You know when you're not able to cry and survive anymore, or make a dog to Allah and actually feel something in your heart? There's an indication the heart has become hard. And the easiest way to harden our hearts in this time is over and over exposure to shamelessness. That's why our hearts have become hard. We have to save ourselves. We really have to, we have to make a concerted joint effort to try and save ourselves. This was my introduction to this series. I want to organize my thoughts more and, and have, you know, the, the topics I have in mind in the, in the future of this discussion is advice to parents, uh, detailed advice to brothers, detailed advice to sisters, advice to married couples, because just because you're married doesn't mean you're not affected by shamelessness, you still are. Advice to married couples, you know, advice to parents whose children are the age that they should be getting married, advice to parents whose children are, are addicted and they found out that they're addicted to whatever, or they're in relationships they shouldn't be, advice to parents like that. Advice to, pa uh, uh, to, to parents whose children have run off with a girl, or run off with a boy, what do you do now? And that's a reality of our community too. We need this advice. We need to have a conversation about this. You know, what is this need if not solutions to our problems? And these are our problems. This is what we're going through. In addition to that, I wanted to have a uh, comprehensive uh, study of Haya and Fahisha in the Quran. The term Haya and the term Fahisha. Haya means shame and life, and Fahisha means rudeness and obscene things. I wanted to have a detailed discussion of all the ayat, all the places it appears, and just study it comprehensively. And then in the end, inshallah ta'ala, have some of my colleagues contribute to certain discussions about gatherings, the fifth discussions that are related about, you know, code of dress and 
uh, rulings on mixed gatherings and things like that. I'm not the I'm not qualified to talk about those things. Those are fifty matters. Those are four fatahah. So I'm going to leave those till the end. But these other things I want inshallah to be able to put a comprehensive discussion together. So please do make dua for me that I'm able to do that and do that effectively and in a way that is beneficial to all of us. Uh, and with that, inshallah, I'd like to, to thank all of you for listening. Uh, I hope you don't ask me loaded questions because this is a pretty loaded subject. Uh, the ayat I recited to you in the beginning of this uh, talk that I didn't uh, explain are ayat number 160. Actually, uh, even before that, uh, let me tell you what ayat numbers they are because I want you to read them on your own. Yeah, these are ayat number 122 to 127. In Surah Ali Ahmad, 122 to 127. They have something to do with shamelessness. I'd like you to read them yourself. Read them yourself and study them yourself. I have number 122 to 127 belonging to Surah Ali Ahmad. And you, when you first read them, you might say, I don't know, it seems like it has nothing to do with shamelessness, but it does. Read it carefully and study it. Inshallah, I know that guy is good as well.